Welcome back. Today, Canada has been grappling with a housing crisis that has left many Canadians struggling to afford decent housing. At the center of this crisis is Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and his handling of immigration policies. I'm Quick Politics, and if you find this content engaging, don't forget to hit that subscribe and like button, as your support truly helps the channel grow. Now, let's delve into the heart of the matter. Trudeau's attempts to address the housing crisis have been met with criticism and heckling from frustrated Canadians. Despite acknowledging the strain caused by a spike in temporary immigration, Trudeau has failed to take responsibility for the impact of his policies. You recently said your government is working on both housing supply and demand by turning the dial down on temporary immigration. Does that mean your government's immigration policy has contributed to record high housing unaffordability? It's really important to understand the context around immigration. Every year we bring in about 450, now close to 500,000 permanent residents a year. And that is uh, part of the necessary growth of Canada. It benefits our, our, uh, our citizens, our communities, it benefits our economy. That, these are the levels that we have stabilized and, and grown steadily over the past years because that's what Canada needs to continue to have a strong economy and strong communities. However, over the past few years, we've seen a massive spike in temporary immigration whether it's temporary foreign workers uh, or uh, whether it's international students in particular that have uh, grown at a rate far beyond uh, what uh, Canada has uh, been able to absorb. Uh, to give an example, in 2017, 2% of Canada's population was made up by, of temporary immigrants. Now, we're at 7.5% of our population comprised of temporary immigrants. That's something uh, that we need to get back under control, both for the benefits of, uh, of those people, but uh, as international students, we're seeing uh, increasingly vulnerable to mental health challenges, to not being able to, uh, uh, to thrive and get the education they want, but also uh, increasingly more and more businesses uh, relying on temporary foreign workers in a way that's driving down wages in some sectors. So we want to get those numbers down. It's a responsible approach to immigration that continues on our permanent residence as we have, but holds uh, holds the line uh, a little more on the temporary immigration that has caused so much pressure in our communities. Trudeau touts fiscal responsibility while unveiling plans for billions in new spending, triggering skepticism among critics who doubt the government's financial management, particularly amid increasing costs for taxpayers. Despite defending his administration's fiscal responsibility by pointing to a low debt-to-GDP ratio and a TAA credit rating, Trudeau faces scrutiny over the wisdom of his spending choices. The announcement of substantial new spending by Trudeau raises apprehensions about the government's capacity to handle taxpayer funds prudently, prompting further debate on the matter. Can we expect higher taxes on the wealthy to pay for this spending? Uh, core to this Liberal government approach has always been fiscal responsibility. We have the lowest debt-to-GDP ratio in the G7. We're the third largest economy in the world with a AAA credit rating from the international bond rating agencies. Our fiscal plan is stable and responsible, and we will continue to put fiscal responsibility as we invest in Canadians, in their communities, and in jobs at the center of our upcoming budget. The government's adjustment of election dates to favor politicians' pensions has incited public indignation, with numerous voices accusing officials of exploiting the system for their own political advantage. Detractors argue that this maneuver may result in significant financial burdens for taxpayers, ultimately benefiting politicians at the public's expense. And, um, it's a little bit sleazy. Um, this bill to change the elections act in ottawa because of of one little thing uh they say that they have to move the date of the next fixed election from october 20th 2025 to october 27th 2025 because well the 20th is when the holiday of diwali starts of course they're also adding in extra voting days and <laughs> of course o over the last several years they've made it so you can vote during the entire writ period but they're saying it's for diwali Really, a lot of us think it's about the fact that 
about 80 MPs qualify for their pension on October 21st, 2025, and a bunch of them, namely Liberals and New Democrats, are going to lose their jobs if an election is held before then. Do you buy the government's uh, line, or do you think this is all about getting millions of uh, dollars for uh, uh, politicians that are about to be fired? They're bandits. They're thieves. You're way nicer than me. They are bandits. This is pigs in the trough. They got their snouts way down in there. Just so everybody understands, the MPs still get what Preston Manning used to call the gold-plated MPs pension. Well, and no, no. It, it's changed a bit. It, back then, it used to be $6 that we put in for every one. Now it's 50-50 and not, not quite as generous as it used to be. Stephen Harper it's pissed gold, off his own uh, It's gold-plated. I don't have one. I, so I don't I have a pension like that either. No. Okay. It's so still good. They've, they've got a great pension. I think it kicks in at the age, age of 55 if they wanted to. Yep. But, you know, you need to get six years uninterrupted in the House of Commons. You need to be an MP for a term and a half. Well, look what Justin Trudeau has done. He's <laughs> nudged the date of the next election just by a little tiny, tiny, tiny bit. And as a result, presto, all of these MPs who previously would not have qualified under the old set election date will now qualify just by a matter of days and get this lifetime pension. So it's pretty gross, and so that's why I call them a bunch of bandits. So, look, in the grand scheme of things, moving the election uh, date by one week, that doesn't impact your life or mine. I've had some people write me panic. What do you mean Trudeau's moving it to October 2027? No, he's not doing that. <laughs> that would go past what even the Constitution allows. Yeah. So in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't impact our daily lives, but it's going to cost us big time. The Canadian Taxpayers Federation does did a, an estimate. And just using average life expectancy and so on, um, they're figuring perhaps as much as $120 million with, you know, these guys getting between $32,000 and $49,000 a year to start, and then it going up, indexed to inflation, it goes up at sixty. dollars all these things, $32,000 to $49,000 a year. You're not going to get rich off of that, but you know what? That's a very nice cushion. If you're 55 and you start collecting $32,000 a year, yeah, you got to go find other work. You don't have to find that much work. Amidst this, the housing affordability crisis intensifies, particularly evident in cities like Vancouver, where soaring prices have rendered numerous individuals financially strained. Yet, Trudeau's ambiguous assurances and absence of specific strategies breed skepticism regarding his administration's capacity to enact substantial reform. We will be uh, releasing a full budget uh, in, on, uh, uh, in a few weeks. Uh, right now, we're talking about some of the elements in that budget, including today's announcement uh, on significant investments in housing supply to make sure that we're both building the infrastructure but also changing the way housing is built across this country. Over the past number of months, 170 different nine agreements 179 different agreements have been signed across the country, not just for different projects here or there like the ones we're in, but to change the way housing is built in municipalities and regions across this country, to make it easier and stronger and faster uh, to build on uh, underused land, uh, to use more federal lands, to concentrate zoning and densification. There's a significant uh, change in the way housing is built across the country, and we're going to continue doing that with this announcement today. Calls for scaling back immigration to alleviate pressure on housing markets and align with economic capacities have gone unanswered, further fueling criticism of Trudeau's leadership. As Canadians grapple with the fallout of the housing crisis, they demand accountability and meaningful action from their government. Will Trudeau rise to the challenge, or will Canadians be left to fend for themselves in an increasingly unaffordable housing market? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you for joining us. If you appreciate content that delves into critical issues, consider subscribing for more insightful updates. Stay informed, and until next time, I'm Quick Politics, signing off.